Uh, can you make out exactly where Keir Starmer stands on this? Well, f funnily enough, Kevin, I agree with you on this one. I don't agree with everything. But I think Keir is flip-flopping between policies. One day he's this, next day he's something else. He's trying to be more right-wing than many of the right-wing parties, even more conservative than the conservatives. I mm -hmm. think that's very worrying for Labour voters like myself and the masses of voters out there who had some hope of seeing a change. Those hopes are fast eroding, especially on principle like this. This is a lawyer, a human rights lawyer. He should know better. Cutting out water, cutting out electricity and food is a war crime that's written in the international law and we've subscribed to it. And for him to flip-flop between that and make it ambiguous, that also indicates that somehow, either conveniently he's forgotten just to become the next PM, or he has become an incompetent lawyer. Either way, that's not acceptable, and it's going to cost him deal in the next election. Uh, and in terms of his leadership, I mean, he's got a growing problem here, hasn't he? Because, you know, for example, uh, Yasmin Qureshi, uh, the shadow equalities minister, called for a ceasefire and then called for the shadow prime minister, if you like, the leader of the Labour Party, uh, Keir Starmer, to uh, also call for a ceasefire, but he won't do that. He still says Israel has a right to defend itself. And then, you know, classic Keir says, well, when I say defend itself, I don't mean, you know, the indiscriminate killing of Palestinian people in uh, the Gaza Strip. So the question here is, you know, this isn't about what you or I believe, uh, uh, Ajmal. This is about what the hell Keir Starmer believes, what he stands for. And I think he owes it to people like you as a Labour voter. He owes it to Labour MPs and he lo uh, certainly owes it to these 150 Labour Muslim councillors who've written to him to make it exactly clear where he stands on this. Because I can't work it out. Well, if you can't work it out, I can't work it out. His MPs can't work it out. His councillors can't work it out. I don't know who can. Well, we'll have to ask here that question. Yeah. And maybe one day you can. But let me put it this way, there are three to four million Muslims living in this country. There are many uh, very strong and powerful seats that would be determined by Muslim communities' votes. And what's happened and how the parliamentarians, especially, uh, which way they sided, how biased and unfair they may have been, how one-sided their rhetoric may have been, how they may have been brought into a particular narrative, all of that would be remembered by each and every voter. So, you know, traditionally speaking, Labour Party used to take Muslim votes for granted mm -hmm. because it has been the party of social justice, equality, fairness, has been championing anti-racist uh, uh, activities and all sorts of amazing things uh, Labour Party has achieved. And it has kept its minority communities very much abreast of its policies at the forefront. Unfortunately, under Keir Starmer, it looks like that's not how it's working. Keir is not clear what he wants and anybody who speaks against him gets easily cut out this cancel culture must stop. Keir has to stand up and say, I'm a human rights lawyer. I'm the uh, leader of the Labour Party. I'm going to make myself very clear, and that is I stand with the international law. Israel must withdraw all the occupied territories. Israel must stop indiscriminate bombing of Gaza. There must be a ceasefire right now. Keir must stand up and say that Israel has the right to defend itself, but it has no right to occupy Palestinian land. You know, uh, at the moment, uh, Kevin, there are... Israelis uh, fighting the Hamas um, a group in Gaza. But uh, in, uh, ironically, or funnily, there are no Hamas members in West Bank. Israeli uh, forces are also killing Palestinians in West Bank and occupying their land, destroying their houses. And even settlers are doing the same thing. And Kia is silent about it all. Yeah, listen, we're saying, uh, Ajma, when will you wake I, I, up and smell the coffee and speak the truth? Ajma, I, 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 re I don't want to get into an argument uh, with you about where you stand. Uh, it's obvious where Fair you enough. stand on this issue. Uh, I don't want to take sides on this. I wanted to get your view on Keir Starmer uh, because uh, I'm getting a little tired of seeing broadcasters fighting with people like you. Uh, and indeed, I'm, on the, I'm on, glad on the you other said side. That, but, Kevin. Yeah, well, seriously, uh, you know, that's not why I'm here to do. I mean, I could have a fight with you about it, but, uh, you know, I respect your standpoint. Uh, I have a slightly different standpoint, but that's a different thing. Let me ask you, though, uh, just objectively, seriously objectively, uh, 
what do you think is going to unfold in the next two, three weeks? I mean, are you expecting an Israeli invasion? Uh, do you honestly... I mean, I know everyone's calling for a ceasefire, <laughs> with the exception of Keir Starmer, or at least a lot of people are. Uh, yeah. But uh, do you expect them to bring about a ceasefire? Because I don't. Uh, and how do you see it unfolding? What, where do you think we'll be in three weeks? Will there be a land invasion? Uh, will there be a ceasefire? Because you must admit the prospect of a ceasefire, nice though the idea is, is pretty remote, isn't it? But if the objective is to abolish and destroy Hamas, I can tell you this. Mm. Hamas has been in existence for the last 20 years. By the way, they have not been existing, in existence from the day Palestine was divided in 1948 and occupation began. Hamas didn't exist then. Hamas only came into being 2006 or 7, the exact date I can't remember. So if the idea is to demolish Hamas, I don't think Israeli government would be able to succeed in that because to demolish Hamas, Israeli government will have to kill millions of Palestinians. There are 2.2, 2.3 million Palestinians living in the biggest open prison uh, uh, camp in the whole world at the moment. So that's one thing. Secondly, ceasefire and a cessation of all hostilities is the only way. I call upon Hamas. Yeah, but but, 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 but Ajma, uh, Ajma uh, is it likely to happen? And well, by I'm the I'm way, while, while, while we're talking about this, uh, I mean, ha Hamas aren't going to let these hostages go. They might let them drip, 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 two more humanitarian reasons, aren't we great? Uh, but they're not going to let their bargaining chip go, are they? Those uh, hostages, uh, most of them are going to remain captive, aren't they? But that, that is, it's hardly a bargaining chip for anybody because that's not acceptable. You can't hold anyone. But it hostage. is, isn't it? Yeah. It's I, what's I'm holding about, Israel I'm, back. I'm just, I'm just about to explain yeah, that. Yeah. It is not in the interest of Hamas to do that. They should release all the hostages immediately. I've called upon uh, the, uh, the Israeli government as well as Palestinian to do the same thing. Look, Israel holds more than 5,000 Palestinians in their prison equally hostage because most of them have not even been tried. Many of them are children and women. They don't know why they're there. And I know some of them don't have access to lawyers. They're in solitary confinement. They've not seen their relatives for years. Mm. So both parties are doing wrong, and we should be consistent. Mm. My point is, let's be consistent. Let's call both parties to stop fighting. Let's bring them to peace. And the only way, Kevin, we're going to get peace mm. is like this. And take it from me, and take it from the many people who are speaking in the same language. If Israel stops occupation, there will be peace tomorrow. If Israel retracted itself to 1967 borders, stopped building illegal se settlements all around, brought back its uh, settler colonizers from terrorizing the Palestinians, there will be peace tomorrow. In fact, you know what? I'll put one more uh, uh, challenge here. I will pay my own fare. I will jump on a plane. I will go to Palestine. I will travel every part of Palestine begging Palestinians to come to the table and start talking about peace. The only way that's going to happen is when Israel stops occupation. End occupation now, peace tomorrow, okay. and everybody can live happily ever after. Th this, is, this, is, this, is, this is your view, uh, Ajmal. As I say, I could have a row with you about it, but uh, I respect your opinion. If we could go back to uh, the original point, uh, if Keir Starmer does mm. not join the calls for a ceasefire, uh, I'm... I'm sort of deducing from what you're saying that you believe he'll be in trouble uh, with the Muslim community and that's four or five million votes. Absolutely. And his councillors, if not 30 or 40, already have resigned from very many key council seats and they've become independent councillors. I'm also envisaging that 150 who have signed this letter may also resign. And in the next election, the four or five million Muslims who live in this country who vote quite strategically and have voted for Labour Party quite uh, substantially all this time, will be voting with their feet. And remember, Muslim communities' voter age group has changed. We are the ones who are voting. My parents may have voted for Labour Party blindly, but you're not going to take my vote for blind. And my sons and my daughters vote no way, under no circumstances, would they give a vote to anybody who especially does not call uh, out any injustices in the world when they see it. And that in itself is an example of a coward leader. A coward leader is the one who makes up excuses and, and he's confused. So Keir is confused. He's trying to confuse the rest of us. We're saying it's simple. Keir, if you want our vote, stand up for justice and fairness. Let's fight for the freedom of Palestinians. Let's create a space where Palestinians, uh, Israelis, Jews, Muslims, Christians can live in the Holy Land peacefully without fighting. And Keir, you should be championing that and not be a coward.